Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you the new KWA Ronin T6. I'm going to go through unboxing, specifications, and then I'm going to go through all of the upgrades that you can see on this rifle. Watch this video to find out more. This is the KWA Ronin T6, and it's one of their tactical series. Let's have a quick look around the box. So it lists some of the features on the front. You can see on the side which version of rifle you have. And then on the back, it goes through the features in a little bit more depth. We're not really interested in the box though, are we? We're interested in what's inside. So let's open it up. So it comes in packaged. Um, it's got foam inserts, so it's going to be sort of safe while it's travelling to you. I'm going to get rid of that foam, never going to use that again. So first things first, let's take a look at the rifle itself. So this is the KWA Ronin T6. As you can see, it's a PDW style rifle, ambidextrous safety, trigger, it's got a normal AR style trigger and a knurled pistol grip as well. So that feels like that's gonna be quite good, especially if you've got wet hands. It's got a slight flaring on the magazine well. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It has a small Picatinny on the bottom of the handguard. Control wise, we've got the standard magazine release catch, safety catch I've mentioned, trigger I've mentioned. It's got a fake bolt release, so that bolt release literally does nothing. It's also got a forward assist, again, that's just there for decoration. And it's got a standard AR style charging handle, which opens up the dust cover when you pull it back. Looking inside, you've got the airsoft sort of pretend bolt. So when you move the working parts to the rear or what would be working parts to the rear, that reveals the hop up system. So you have a little rotary hop up in there. Let that go forward and then close the dust cover. So the rear of the rifle, we've got an extendable stock. So to extend the stock, you just pull it and it's good to go. It's got a number of different settings on there. If I press it and push it in, that's the second position. And then the third position is fully stowed. The actual rods themselves are made out of metal and the buttstock pad is plastic. Also, this has got a plastic battery compartment uh, and a plastic lid. That's something I'm not quite happy with about this rifle. It's a great rifle, don't get me wrong. Um, but if I was to change anything on it, I would have a metal battery compartment on there and perhaps a different style battery compartment lid. Let's take a look at some of the specifications of the rifle itself. The length retracted is 21.75 inches. The length extended is 26.5 inches. It's 10.5 centimetres high. The outer barrel is 6.75 inches long and the inner barrel is 7.25 inches long. The magazine capacity, these are 30 or 120 round magazines. This is the brand new muzzle brake on the KWA Ronin. It's heavyweight, it's metal, and it actually looks pretty cool. The fore end has universal M-lock fitments so that you can add plenty of accessories. It's also a monolithic style, so it's a single piece design. With a sleek tactical cut, it should stand out from its competitors in the field. The rifle has a monolithic style Picatinny rail that runs the full length of the top of the rifle, which basically means that you can have flip up sights, optics, whatever else you want to mount to the top of your rifle. The AG 2.5s feature an updated one piece rotary hop up with a large, easy to use polymer dial that clicks to stay in place so that you can be sure that you stay on target. The rifles come with backup iron sights, which are standard on all Ronin series rifles. They flip up to use and flip down and you can adjust the height of the foreblade so that you can get on target. 
This is the rear sight. So again, the same as the front sight, you just simply pull it up and that will click into place. It also features a slide, so you can go from a large battle sight to a more accurate sight. It also has an adjustment wheel so that you can move the sight left to right. Okay, so we looked at the rifle, uh, so we're gonna put that down to one side. And let's have a look at what else is in the box. So you have a KWA magazine, these ones are the 30 rounds and 120 rounds. So these are selectable mags. So they're quite good for mil, sim or normal games. They're mid cap mags. Uh, when they come, the little extender is pushed out. Make sure before you stick the magazine on your rifle, if you wanted to have a play with it, that you push the extender inside and it just clicks inside. And then you can safely put that onto your rifle. If you put it onto the rifle with a little extender poking out, you will break it, so, so don't do that. So you get one magazine. Um, so if you are gonna get this rifle, make sure you order some more. Um, I've ordered a three pack of these, so I should have four magazines in total. Uh, the other thing to say about these magazines, on the bottom, they've got the Magpul marking system. So you can use the Magpul grid to actually letter and number, i.e. stencil uh, decals on there. So these could be um, your call sign, or these could be sort of initials or mag one, etc. Uh, basically, the world is your oyster. You've, you've got one on each side. So um, fill your boots, enjoy. The other bits that come within the kit are, let's have a look. You have an adjustment tool. So this tool is used for changing the FPS in your, on your rifle. This is a variable FPS rifle. Um, so if you are running it a little hot, and you go through chrono, your day is not spoiled because you can use this tool and you can tweak it. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But you can tweak the FPS on the rifle and that will bring it down so that you're within safe limits. You've got a couple of Picatinny rails. So these are small Picatinny rails. Um, I'm gonna be using some of these on it. Um, I've got a torch and things um, and accessories, whatever, to to pimp up my rifle. So I'm gonna be using these accessories, uh, but what's great is they come with the rifle so you don't have to buy any spares. KWA sticker, so I'll stick that on the rifle in a bit. You've got a link to a downloadable manual. KWA warranty, so again, read that and then you'll know what you're covered for and what you're not covered for. Um, and you have the instruction manual. And on the back is a parts diagram as well. So if anything does break throughout its life, you can actually identify what part it is and hopefully all of the right bit. But as with all of my videos and all of my gear, what I would say is read the instruction manual, read it. Uh, honestly, I know it's not the done thing. However, you can avoid simple things that will destroy your brand new rifle if you don't read it. So read it and um, basically use it safely. So that's what I would say. So these are the uh, these are the bits that come within the box. Battery wise, I'd recommend an 11.1 .1 LiPo battery. As with any new rifle, they come pretty standard out of the box. So I wanna make this my own and I wanna add a few accessories and let's kind of upgrade it. So firstly, I'm going to whip off these two iron sights. I've got a Vortex torque wrench. Just going to get the screwdriver blade out. Pop that in there. So let's remove the front sight. Remove the bolt, and then the side will slide off. Just put the pieces back together because we don't want to lose it. And I'll stow that back in the box. We get the rear sight. 
again. Take the bolt out, it should slide back. Just do that up. Don't want to lose the bits and then again, put that back in the box. And I've got Magpul Ember sights. So I've got a rear sight and a front sight. Just loosen off the bolt, same as before. Slide it on, don't have to move the charging handle. Slide it on, that should go onto that. And then fit the bolt. When you put the rear sight on, put your finger over the nut, and then on the other side, just screw it in so it's nice and tight. It's not gonna go anywhere. That's one. And then we do the same for the front side. So just loosen the bolt. So slide it on. quite tight so it's a good rail and then put the bolt in and then screw it up so that's fitted front sights and these you just press to extend them same as the rear sight so that's the first mod so now we've added the embus rear sights we're going to add a vortex crossfire so this is going to be our main red dot optic so i'm going to swap out the screwdriver and put a t10 piece in We want to set the screwdriver to 18. So Vortex recommend 15 to 18, but I'm gonna put this one on at 18. We then loosen off the bolt on the optic. Just make sure it doesn't fall off. And then we place the optic where we want on the rifle. So I want this quite forward. There you go. So we hold the optic on and then we screw up the bolt to the correct torque. So now we've got the ember sights and the vortex crossfire fitted. The great thing about these is they are lower one third co-witness. So if the red dot does fail, then you can use your backup iron sights. So just stow them away. We all know there's a lot of indoor matches and CQB with airsoft. Uh, so we're now gonna mount on my flashlight. So for this I need to add one of the new Picatinny rails. So I've set my torque wrench to 15 inch pounds, apply a slight bit of pressure and then torque to the correct setting. And then the same with the front. There you go. So that's fitted the Picatinny rail on nice. Next thing we need to do is slide on the accessory. that in place. Then I'm going to need to fit a little bit of Velcro along the top just so that I can fit my pressure switch. I've got some Velcro backing so I'm just going to peel that off and stick that on the top Picatinny rail. Push it down and then the pressure switch fits nicely on top. I like to be able to see where my BBs are going, so I'm going to be using Tracer green BBs. So to make the Tracer work, I've got an Ace Tech Brighter C. Let's open up this Tracer unit. Inside the box, you've got the charging lead, and then you've got the unit itself. So it's a nice, compact little Tracer unit. Let's open it up. 
So this is the tracer unit itself. Lengthwise, it's only 2.24 inches and it only weighs 32 grams. So it's really, really light. But also there's an adapter on it. So it will take M11 clockwise thread. So like I said, micro charging USB cable. A fully charged battery on this will last over 20,000 rounds. Have a quick look inside. So this is the charging port. So that's where you'd charge it up. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit this to the front of our rifle. So to fit the tracer unit, we're gonna to need to remove this muzzle brake. So on the underneath, if you have a look inside, you'll see a very small Allen key hole. So I'm gonna get a small Allen key and I'm going to remove the Allen key bolt so that I can unscrew the muzzle. So you're gonna use a 1 16th Allen key to remove the muzzle brake. So that fits in a very small Allen key in the base of the muzzle brake itself. So we remove that bolt, it comes out. Then we should be able to unscrew the muzzle brake itself. Yep, yeah, so that comes off. We're gonna put the little bolt back into the muzzle brake because we don't want to lose that. and pop that back in the box. We haven't quite finished what we're doing. We're going to add a small handle onto the front Picatinny rail. So this one locks on. It's not an expensive one, which is why it's still a little bit wobbly at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it up to 15 inch pounds. And that will hold it in place. So let's take a closer look at the Ace Tech Brighter C tracer unit. So this is what I have here. It's a real lightweight tracer unit. So the way it operates is you unscrew the cap on the front. And that reveals a charging port and also the LEDs. So you can actually see the status of the device. It comes with a micro USB charging cable. So you plug, just simply plug that into any USB socket and charge it up. The manual recommends that you give it a good first charge. So leave it charging for three hours for the first time to ensure best performance of the battery. To power on the unit, you just shake it and then it'll give a beep and you'll see the green LED is flashing. If you leave the unit idle, i.e. you put your rifle down for five minutes, it will then go into sleep mode and then it will return back to standby when there's any vibration. If you want to power it off, you need a device. Uh, this is a Sandy Park pencil. Um, any other pencil will do, but obviously uh, it needs to be a rugby pencil, surely. So to power this off, you can use a stick or a pen. Uh, it needs a diameter of 10 millimeters at least. Um, the idea is you put it inside and then you need to wait for three sets of beeps five times. And then remove it and that powers down the unit. There you go, so nothing on there. The LED has three different breathing light sort of processes. When it's red, that indicates it's under 30%. Orange is between 30 and 60, and green is between 80 and 99% charged. When installing the device, you need to make sure that your screw thread is less than 10 millimeters. Otherwise, the barrel will cover the sensor of the unit, causing a malfunction. So rotate the unit on. If the sensor is covered by the barrel for over two seconds, there'll be a warning of three beeps every two seconds, and you'll just need to check your installation. Let's just go through making this some adjustments to the rotary hop-up. So pull the charging handle to the rear, and that will expose the rotary hop-up. 
So basically with your BB trajectory pattern, if your BB is dropping freely or tra travels a short, or your BB travels a short distance and then falls off, you need to turn the rotary hop up upwards. So you need to rotate that towards the top of the rifle. If your BB is already traveling in a straight line and then drops off, it's good to go, leave it as it is. However, if your BB travels in a flat short distance and then goes up and then drops, or travels upwards, then you need to rotate the hop up down. This is something you need to kind of play with at the range before you go out on the site, just to make sure that your rifle is shooting true. So now we've got our KWA Ronin T6 upgraded with the parts and accessories that I wanted to. I'm now gonna go through how you prepare the rifle for firing. So first things first, we need to remove the buttstock. So we press down on the catch and then pull the buttstock and it should come all the way off. Next, we can open up the battery compartment and just remove that. And then we take out the cables just really carefully. So before you do anything, you need to check the wiring. So make sure the wires are pushed all the way into the connectors. Sometimes they can push out. Also check the fuse. So look at the fuse, make sure that you can still see the loop and that it's not blown. Try to avoid bending the wires excessively as this could affect performance and may damage the wiring on the inside. So this is the battery we're gonna be using. It's an 11.1 volt, 1,100 milliamp hour LiPo battery. It's got two connectors. It's got a balancing connector that you use when you're charging. And then it's got the female part of the Tamiya socket. So to connect that up, simply line up the square and the round holes and then push them together. I always hold the cables at the back and push it in and then it should click. You should see that there's a, like a little tiny catch that will keep the battery in place. To fit the battery, we push it into the base of the battery compartment about halfway and then we tuck very carefully the cables in. Make sure they're out of the way and then we replace the cap. So there's got a longer bit on the end of the cap. We will just wanna make sure that that's not gonna interfere with any of the cables when you push it in there. So that should clip and that will stay on there. Probably what I will do um, is I'm probably gonna put a bit of electrical tape around it just to try to make that compartment a little bit more watertight and also reduce the risk of this connector coming off. So then we get our buttstock, line it up with those holes and then push it on. We need to depress the button and push it all the way in. And then that is our battery fitted. So the rifle now, we leave that on safe and it is capable of firing BBs. If you're at the range and the FPS on your rifle is too high or not quite good enough, you can adjust it between 340 and 370 feet per second. The way you do that, we extend the retractable butt plate to the rearmost position and remove it entirely by pressing the lever and just pulling it out. Next, flip it over, press the tab on the top and remove the battery retention plate and pull that off. And then inside the battery compartment, if we just move the wires out of the way, you'll need to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the stock retainer and the screw. So once you've removed the screw, you use this tool to increase the FPS. We would insert the tool and rotate it clockwise. That will increase the FPS. To reduce the FPS, you rotate it anti-clockwise. Once you've, once you've made your adjustments, you then return it all back, refit the screw, replace your battery. I'm not gonna do that at the moment. I'm just going to close the cover, refit the stock. press the button and the stock should slide all the way in. And then once you've got it all back together again, go back to the chrono and recheck. Hopefully you'll be back within tolerances. 
Once we've got the rifle ready to fire, we need to load up our magazines with some BBs. So these are six mil ammo. I'm using 0.28s for this one. And these are green tracer, so they should shine up really well with my, uh, with my tracer unit. This is a mid cap magazine. So to load the BBs in here, you can't, there's no way of pouring them in. You have to use a speed loader. So open up the speed loader. So here we go. This is a CCP Cyclone M4 speed loader. This is one, never used it before. So it's got a, a little window on the bottom. Slide that open. Use a pair of scissors and we can open our BB packet. Open up the packet. Yeah. Lovely niche inside. And then we're gonna kind of squeeze it so we've got a bit of a funnel and then pour it into the speed loader. And you think it's treats, don't you? It's not, it's DB. So this thing holds about a thousand BBs. So, how many left in the pack there? There's 2,000 in this bag, so it holds well over a thousand BBs. I know you think it's a treat, don't you? But it's not, they're BBs. Not exciting as you think. Right. So we'll make sure, ow, that hurts. Make sure we close the compartment And then we move the handle out of the way and then we fit the magazine. So there's a little connector in the bottom, that's where the BBs come out. And there's a connector on the top of the magazine. So we just line those two up. It fits together. What do you want? You want some BBs? You can have some treats later. Okay, so we line those up. Never work with animals. <laughs> and then literally rotate in the direction of the arrow. Until it stops, turn it back over. And there you go, you can see that this is loaded up with BBs. So there should be 120 BBs within this magazine. Just note that a few do fall out when you turn the wheel to stow it. So I put them back in my hand and then fit them back into the top. They all cost money, so we need to make sure they're all back in there. So that's the magazine fully charged and good to go. So I've now got my KWA Ronin T6 all set up and ready to go. Let's have a look and see how accurate it is. And also let's kind of have a bit of a gauge of the rate of fire. So to prepare it for firing, magazine, it's on safe. Give it a shake and then that switches on the Brighter C tracer unit. Okay, so to get some distance, um, I'm down the end of my hallway and I'm shooting into the garden. So I've set up like a little target down the bottom of the garden. And once I've taken a few shots, We'll go down and we'll have a look and see how it's performing. I'm going to be shooting off the top of the chair just so that you can kind of see the grouping that this Ronin T6 can do. I can shoot standing but more accurate off the top of a barricade so let's see what single fire looks like. And then we switch to full auto, and then we'll see how quick the fire rate is. I'm happy with that. Let's go down and have a look at the target.
there you go i'd say that's pretty accurate uh, so that was five rounds semi and then there was bursts of full auto so that's pretty cool only a few little flyers but yeah amazing So here we have my fully pimped up Ronin T6 Tactical. So this is an airsoft rifle. So starting from the fore end, we've got a Brighter C Tracer unit. This is an Ace Tech Tracer unit. We've got a Phoenix PD-36 flashlight, the PD-36 flashlight mount and pressure switch. I've got a Vortex Optics Crossfire. I fitted Embus iron sights. So these are lower one third co-witness and they pop up, which is quite cool. I've also fitted a pistol grip here. So if it's tight spaces for CQB, I've got quite a good little forend. Obviously I can't operate the light from there, so I'm gonna to need to work out how I'm gonna do that. Uh, any ideas, drop them in the chat. What I might do, um, I've got some more rip and stick Velcro. So I might add a bit of Velcro on the side here so that I can actually access it with my thumb. I hope you enjoyed my video about the Ronin T6. We went through unboxing, some of the specifications, and I also showed you the upgrades that I'm doing to my rifle. This is purely cosmetic at the moment. It's not gonna change the speed or the actual um, function of the rifle itself. That may come at a later date. I think you can fit a Gate Titan MOSFET, um, and there may be other things that you can do to the rifle. Again, anybody use these KWA Ronin T6, drop in the chat how you would upgrade it um, and I might do it. Um, again, money dependent, but I quite like this rifle. It's pretty cool, nice and compact for CQB and also the stock extends, so it'll be just as good for out in the field. All right, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed my video and maybe see you out on the playing field one day through my sights. You'll notice me because you'll be the one getting hit. <laughs> All right, anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.